We pray that while we are preaching and teaching the word of God, that their children will get out of jail. Their loved ones will be miraculously healed. Miracles will take place in their bodies. Cancer will dry up. Diabetes will go away. Hallelujah. We're in your presence. And you said in your presence there is a fullness. So we're looking for these things to take place in fullness. Because we're in your presence. And everybody say, man. Stand up and give God a good praise. Too many dead spirits in here. So that when they teach it or preach it, 
it has an original effect in your midst. When they preach the God of the Old Testament as a healer, and they have lost none of its interpretation, they have lost none of its definitions, healing takes place when it's preached. Y'all not get this. Amen. Listen, I don't need another level of minds in here tonight. Amen. So when he put his word in their mouth, it was his word. Yeah. Oh. It was not a word. It was his word. He sent his word to heal us. He sent his word to set us free. Not a word. Praise God. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit and then I'm going to be a few minutes and I'm going to quit because it's tight in here tonight. Amen. I said amen. Now, the reason we're not being healed and prophecies are not coming to pass is because the word is not pure and the prophets are not true. The Bible said you know a prophet by the fruit. Not because they sensationalize you. Not because they call you out by your name. Not because they tell you your telephone number. You know a prophet by the life they live. If the fruit ain't no good, come on now. The prophet ain't no good. So many false prophets have gone out and we have them in this day and time. They're on television, they're on radio. And the reason that there's nothing happening behind their word because it's not the pure word. Now also in that town of Jerusalem, not only did they have temples, they had synagogues. Now you gotta listen to the bishop here. They had synagogues. You know what a synagogue is? A synagogue is a place where men who had lost the old path. They had a synagogue and they taught the Decalogue. They taught the Torah as best as they could with their language, with their understanding. That's how they had church. Now this, what you're in tonight, is a synagogue. I'm improving, I'm growing. I'm earnestly contending for that word that was once delivered unto the church. Because if I get that word, something go happen. set up under amen priests you understand what I'm saying that could qualify me to speak in the temple so that this is somewhat of a synagogue and much of what you hear around the country these preachers preaching they're just in a synagogue because a lot of the original is dead and they died before they could transfer it See, this thing was supposed to come down from generation to generation. Glory to God. And so when we as the wild olive branch was grafted in, we were supposed to be grafted in to the original. Are you getting any of this? So this is why the apostles said, let us contend for the faith which was once delivered into the church. Now, the reason we don't have that faith is because we don't have that word. The word that we're getting is misinterpreted. It's contaminated. Men have their own ambitions and desires mixed in there. You don't hear me. They're not glorifying God. They are in it for what they can get out of it. And so the word has lost its originality. And that's why original things are not taking place. So we got to go back to the old landmark. Hey. 
sick is all past. Thank you, Jesus. We gotta go further back than David Mason. We gotta go further back, glory to God, than Elder Michal. We gotta go further back than the Pope. We gotta go back to the old landmark. Say yes. Now, I learned something. Y'all pray for me, because I've been working all day and I hear that. But I learned something. One of the first things that I did when we moved down here, I got me a metal detector. And I was going around with that metal detector. And I was digging all in holes. Down there panning for gold. And the reason I was doing this is because this was an old site. And it hadn't been invaded by this modern world. It still had some of the relics of ancient people buried in the ground. And I felt that many of them was undisturbed and had been preserved down through the years. So I found old bottles. I found an old cocoa bottle that was like 40 years old. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it was worth some money. Yeah. Amen. You, you follow where I'm at? Yeah. So you and I have got to seek the old paths. We got to go back to the old landmark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I want somebody to come and turn this. I'm going to be a few minutes. Because oh, praise the Lord. Give the Lord another prayer. Oh, I love the wheels that preach. Hallelujah. Y'all give the Lord another prayer to take this. Thank you, Jesus. Can you turn it around? Come come on, somebody. Give me a hand. Up. No, you don't. You ain't got nothing. That's your pride. I'll be another 20 minutes waiting on you to battle with pride. Come on over here. There you go. Y'all give God a praise already. Now, I wanted you to see this because every now and then, God anoints me with a teaching spirit. He said, teach the people the way of the Lord. Now I'm going to say something that's absolutely profound. It may not come off with you like this, but I'm teaching to different mindsets here. Amen. 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 Now, what Satan has done, he has attacked your soul. Now, when, when Algonai came unto Hannah and he was intimate with her, she could not get pregnant by him. She was carrying the prophetic. His love, his intimacy could not bring it. Amen. So she had to go to God. There's some of you that's carrying the prophetic. You, you, it has not expired. You're carrying an utterance. You're carrying an exaltation. You're carrying a sermon. Yes! And the person that you're with may not be compatible. May not be, come on now, may not cause you to, you know, to conceive and bring forth. And let me tell you something. You better go to God. And he said, I'm going to God. Yes, see, it says, that that prophetic was under law. So she knew it wasn't her husband. Because he was having children. She knew it wasn't her because she had been visited by God and had the desire to give birth. So what was the problem? It was locked in her soul. She had to get it unlocked. And it had to be a power that would unlock her. Can I release unlock here tonight? Oh God, help me, praise the Lord. Let me run the 
something real quick. I'm going to have to come back. Praise the Lord. Lord. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. Deuteronomy 13. Oh, my shout out of the top of my Y'all ain't ready for this word. Have me a reader with that. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. If there arise among you a prophet. If there arise among you a prophet. Or a dreamer. Or a dreamer. Of dreams. Of dreams. And give it thee a sign or a wonder. And give it thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee. Whereof he spake. Now this is one of the signs that you know that a person is a prophet by what they say come to pass. Go ahead. Let us go after other gods which thou hast. But if he turns, after he's given you a true interpretation of your dream, after he's given you a prophetic word about your life, not seeing your boyfriend in the house, you're going to get all that cut to bed. But if he turns from divine oracles, if he turns from the word of God, if the Torah is not in his mouth, if the word of the Lord is not in his mouth, what? Let us serve other gods and serve If he tell you to serve other gods, what? Then thou shalt not hearken unto me. Thou shalt not hearken. I don't care how much truth he's told you about. You gonna get a car. You gonna get a man. You go, but if he deviates uh -huh. from the word of God, if he doesn't deal with the blood, if he doesn't deal with the Holy Spirit, if he doesn't deal with living right, if he doesn't deal with seeking the face of God, fasting and prayer, don't listen to him. Give God some praise. Now, if you have needs, how God meet those needs, is he will raise up a prophet in your midst. He will not bring a prophet from afar. He got to raise one up in your midst that's acquainted with the God that's among you. He will raise him up and give him a word. Your word. That's the way God does it. Amen. You know, the government been away on somebody talking to you on the elevator. No. In this church, God will raise up somebody that know you. And you go into hell and they don't know anything about it. And they'll come and say, look, I had a dream. They'll come and say, look, the Lord spoke to me to tell you that you need $83 and you're going to get it. He raises up among you a prophet or a prophet test and put your word in their trust. God help me here. That's why you can't have carnal relationships. That's why you got to get along. Because all that will hinder your word. You would be real mad to that if you knew how many people God spoke to to speak to you. And because of the friction, oh my God. you misunderstand. Yeah. Uh-huh. You didn't get your word. And you went through a lot of hell you wouldn't have had to go through. Because what God does, he said, I'm a present help in the time of trouble. I'm right there in your midst. You ain't got to go look for me. I'm closer than the nose on your face. I'm talking to that woman who I connected to you. You understand what I'm saying? Give God some more praise. Joshua 6 and 1, I want to show you what God has given to you. Not just prophets in your midst. Y'all praying for me? Oh, glory to God. I especially look forward to streaming on these nights because I have such a word listening audience that depend on a word from the Lord. I'm not only teaching here, but I'm teaching around the globe. Yeah. Releasing that word that somebody gets set free. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We, we're contending for the faith. 
Hallelujah. I want that word that came to Moses. I want that word that came to Elijah, an infallible word, a word that accomplished what it was said to accomplish. Say amen. amen. Glory to God. Let's read this quickly. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Go on. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thee, into thy hand Jericho. I have given into your hand Jericho a city. I don't care who they they own, what they think they own. But some people swatting on stuff, got stuff. It's not theirs, it's yours. And those of you telling God, well, somebody living in there, they may be living there. How come? God will open a business, let somebody open it, invest their money, and it's your business all the time. He has a way to come, God. city, I want you to write that, or either get this tape, and not only have I given you the city, but I've given you the government. I've given you the head authority. The chief mechanism. Because a lot of you are afraid of what God will give you, because you don't have the intelligence to run it. When God gives you something, it's by my spirit. Not by the whims of men, but by my spirit, said the Lord. You underestimate the wisdom of God. You underestimate the ability of God. You underestimate the intelligence of God. Who do you think God is? You equate him to be nothing. When God puts something in your hand, he gives you the wisdom. Come on, the wisdom comes with it how to manage what he has entrusted in your hand. So now you got the city and you got the king and what else he going to give you? And the mighty men of battle. And he going to give you men of battle. The three things that God will give and he's giving it to the church. Now he's giving it to this ministry, this Jesus, this Joshua ministry. I've given you a city. I've given you the government. And I've given you men of battle. You can't lose. Yeah. Did y'all write that down? Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Man. I'm telling you, I feel an anointing up in here. <laughs> All right, get ready. The Holy Spirit told me to come out here for a few moments and say this to you. Seek the old path. You got a new upstart, a lot of new preachers springing up, coming up with new stuff. Amen. Try this, try that, try the other. But the Lord says, seek the old path. Look at him now, watch it. Why? Because all warriors fought there. To. Go back to the seashore where he crossed the Red Sea. Come on, you gotta help me out. Go back to where he called the Red Sea. Go back to where the clouds were on their path. Go back to old path. And all warriors fought there, prayed there, and were taken See you later, Oh, boy. 
Jesus. Stop there. I want to stand on the rock with Moses too. Woo, glory to God. I want to hold David's sword. I want to sing Miriam's song. Say yes. Glory to God. Take me back, take me back. I got to give this. Amen. Why? Because old warriors fought them. Every now and then, I pray the prayer that Mason prayed. Some get a hold of me. Some come over me. Some stand up on the inside. I need to talk to somebody here. Say yes. Glory to God. Amen. I want to try what the old people try. I want to stop calling the old fogies. fought there, and get this, and lost some of their guns. And if I go back there, Find the word he fought with. Find his helmet, I find the faith he walked in. Come on, somebody, get God to pray. Buried in the sand, in the dirt, in the soil. Maybe a piece of his sword. What is said to come? I may find his garment, his sword, his armor, but above all, I may find his life. The life surrender, the life given, the life buried and resurrected. I may find his formula spiritual success. Give God some praise. Word that God gave, yeah. you will find 
some of the things that they use. You and I may find how to move a mountain, how to cross a river, how to lock a lion's jaw, how to bring food down from heaven. Say yes. How to cross a river, how to defeat our enemy with the eye number. You know what I'd like to find? I'm going to find a piece of that garment. I may find that whole sword, that whole word. And the reason we're not finding the whole word now is because of homonutics. Now, homonutics was basically given to all Jews. The old priests that kept the original meanings and sayings of things and the word. Homonutics mean the science of interpreting the scripture. The ability to accurately interpret the word of God. And we lost that. Homiletics is the ability to articulate, to speak, to preach. If you've been called to preach, you need homiletics. You need some pizzazz, you need some seasoning. It is the ability to articulate. So, homiletics is what's lost. We're preaching sermons, but we lost the science to interpret what God is saying to us. We're giving an inaccurate interpretation of the word. Hallelujah. So I'm going back to the old landmark. Some originality there. Yeah. I'm going to find maybe the sword, the garment, yeah. the breastplate, the helmet. Yeah. Come on, help me out, shit and dollars. Yeah. But above all, I just may find his footprint. I may not only know where he's, how he stood, but where he stood. For I'm told by the ancient ones that when he stood on that rock, his, his feet burned through the leather and made prints in that rock. And from the time he left the presence of God, he walked heavy under the anointing. And he made footprints wherever he stepped. And I step in there, huh? It's going to lead me where it led him. I'm mean, in a line up where he wound up. Glory to God. Maybe. I like to feel like I'm talking to somebody here. We will find some of Moses. David, Samuel, stuff. I want they stuff. Breaking a lion's jaw, I want they stuff. Fire down from heaven. I want this stuff. Prophets of old, men of old. In order to have what they have, we got to go back. We got
got to find those old paths. You've got some more praise. Now for those of you who are not going to buy this tape, I put this here for you to copy. Homiletic, the ability to speak, preach, or articulate that word you've been called to present. Whether in song or whatever. To not sit back and cry and talk about what you ain't got. But to do everything within your sphere and ability to upgrade yourself. Amen. 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 And then, of course, homonutics, the science of interpreting the word, which is lost in our church. That's why I said best you have a synagogue. In a synagogue, you have men just getting up talking, and women, what they know. And that's A from Bullfrog. Amen. 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 Because you cannot interpret Amen. their language with our language. Amen. You got to get an understanding yeah. of their language yeah. in order to get the meaning of what they said. Right. Amen. Amen. And when you read a scripture and you come up with the wrong interpretation, God cannot enact upon that scripture. He cannot bring it to pass because you don't have the right interpretation. So when you talk about homonutics, you're talking about men that preserve the way of the Lord. They held on to it for ages. And the devil come in and tore down their tempers, stole their ark, the word, amen, killed their priests. Why? To keep us from hearing the word of God. Keep us from receiving. Because once you get the right interpretation of God's word, you're going to be healed. Your blind eyes are going to come up. Works is nothing but the word. And it's rightly interpreted. There's nothing that can keep you from your blessing. Help me to pray for those who are viewing on the stream and Facebook. We're praying for you. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, intervene for you now, the God of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit come upon you. And may strange and wonderful things occur and take place in your life. Right now in Jesus' name. Come and see me if you can. Come and worship. The call letters will be shown. Come and praise God with us. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye for now. Let's give God some praise.